Do you see the scrolling messages at the bottom of the screen? Pretty cool, huh? Deadline is going to go over this line by line and we'll learn about zero page indexing. If you want to learn how to make this yourself, stick around. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another Cities in C64 programming video. I thought it would be nice if I made the letters a little bit bigger in the videos because it occurred to me that not everyone might be able to see the smaller characters so I hope that helps. So today we're going to talk about what is zero page. Zero page is a special part of the Commodore 64 memory. It's bytes 0 through 255, the very first 255 bytes. That's known as zero page. And within there, we can use two bytes that are sequentially located to form what are known as vectors. And these are essentially pointers to different memory locations. So, indi indirect indexing addressing mode is what we're going to be covering today. But we might surprise you and put in indexed indirect addressing mode as well, just so you know. Indirect index, indirect index addressing mode is when you have two sequential bytes of zero page is required. Two sequential bytes of zero page is required. The Y register is used to offset the result. The example here is load the accumulator with dollar sign FB comma Y. And so FB equals 52 and FC, which is the byte after that, in zero page, is going to be 34, let's say. The result Oh, the Y register will set it to 3, let's say. So the result of all this is that the vector is now 3452 memory address plus three which makes it three four five five right. the accumulator will hold the memory address at three four five five so that's how this indirect indexing addressing mode works and it's important to understand that because uh, you know because that's how this long scroller is going to work just by shifting those two addresses so now i'm going to put in some constants rather than import the entire constants file i figure we go back a little bit i figure we go back a little bit you know do a sort of get up to, uh i don't know how to say it sort of uh, refresher on what these registers really are, right? So, D011 is VIC control register 1. D012 is the VIC raster counter, and we're going to be using that to do a uh, wait for vertical blank type of thing. Um, D016 is VIC control register 2, and those two things are going to be what uh, control the how you know the scrolling of characters. Now we're going to add the ZP temporary variable, and this is the zero page space FB and FC. So we're going to use the two sequential bytes of FB and FC in zero page. So this is where we're going to have our vector to point to our memory of the long scroller message. Going to add in the screen bottom left constant. We've already pre calculated it. It's 7C, uh, 7C0 hex. The screen bottom right is what we're going to do. Add as a constant, and it's uh, dollar sign 7E8, E7. I meant it's the bottom right memory location on the screen. Then we're also going to add a color RAM location bottom left. 
So that's where we can pull those colors from across. So DBC0. So let's uh, go ahead and start the program now. Create a basic upstart. And in kick assembler, it's pretty simple. You just uh, star equals dollar sign zero eight zero one. You can put a label there if you like. I always do. I put a basic right in quotes. And then colon basic upstart. And then uh, in there you put dollar sign zero eight zero D. You can actually make that wherever you want, but I'll just put zero eight zero D. It's pretty uh, straightforward there. So then we'll put start label, and then first thing we're going to do, we're going to load the accumulator with zero. Start in uh, D020 and D021, and then uh, this is to uh, change the back screen, background black. We're going to load white character. White is the built-in keyword for kick assembly. Jump stream. F52, which is the kernel char out load number dollar 93. That's the hexadecimal equivalent of clear. So you're printing the clear character, which will clear the screen. And so there you go, clear black, clear screen black. Pretty basic, right? Of course, you can color what color whatever you want. There's 16 different colors to choose from. I just happen to choose black and white for this. So we'll start as main routine, and then do a jump to main to close that loop. That'll be our main loop. to do a reset message subroutine we'll fill that in later as well I'm just getting basics down here so we we'll put hello message label and this is where we're going to store our message the long message we can make it as long as we'd like I do encoding screen code upper this is screen code uppercase for kick start or kick assembly uh, it'll transform those characters into the upper screen codes. And like I said, you can type in anything you'd like here. Let's see what can we put? Uh huh. Dot byte. Yeah, we're gonna need a dot byte at the end this is how we're going to know that the text is over with if we have a byte of ff in there and you're not going to normally have printing an ff character in your scroll and if you do well maybe you should use a different character to check on but yeah put anything you want in this section i'm just going to happen to put in our patreon information in there boom that's a cut and paste job. Have you ever heard of that? Yep. So this is the uh, City Zen long, long text scroller and color cycling, episode 12. And then we'll do a color table underneath that. Let's do some light blue, 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 blue. Keep going. Just put as uh, you know. If they ask you if you want blue, say yes. They say how much blue you want. Put yes. Yes, I want blue. So we're gonna fill that out. And this can also be well. This needs to be confined to 255 bytes. Maybe someday I'll do a color table which is more than 255 bytes. But you could probably uh, what do you call? could probably extrapolate how to do that 
by watching this video. But we're going to end it with the same bite FF as well. Now, let's add some VARs to the end. We were going to want a color cycle timer. Just one bite. Put bite zero. And then we're going to put color table position. They're like a cursor of where you're at in the color table. By zero. So it's going to start off with light blue and then do blue, 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 blue. And you can't see it on the screen right now, but there are some light blues and white at the end. So it'll flash like a white in the middle. So let's go back and fill in our main routine. First thing we're going to do is load the accumulator with zero. Then we're going to actually modify that byte right there, what it loads, as part of code. So essentially, lo um, modifying itself in the process and if you've ever heard the term self-modifying code this is uh, kind of what's meant by this All right we're gonna actually modify the code and we'll show you I'll show you that in a minute but we're gonna need a label up there for it we could use main but we might want to put something else in there so I'm gonna put uh, self-modifying code label or SMC underscore label. That way we can address it. And I'll show you here in just a second. Now we're gonna end that location with 07 and store that in the bit control register two. This is your um, horizontal scroll register. Now we're going to load the accumulator with FF and compare that with Vic Raster Counter. And uh, what we're doing here is, uh, I was talking about it before, we're going to wait until the Vic Raster Counter gets to FF, which is pretty much your vertical blank. That's off screen, nothing's going to be drawn. So we're just going to branch right there until it reaches that point. Then we're going to allow the execution of the code again. And it happens so fast, you won't even realize it. But it's kind of a cool thing to do if you don't want any of the jerkiness. You see when sometimes some people write these scrolls and it's a little bit torn in places. Then we're going to load uh, accumulator with C8 and store that in big control register 2. Now, here's where we uh, modify the code up there. We decrement SMC label plus one, which it skips over the load accumulator opcode, grabs SMC label plus one, ends it with 07, compares it to 07, and branches if not equal to skip move. So, within the the skip move loop we're going to actually move the characters on the screen right if not it's just going to skip this part skip the move essentially this is going to be a simple pool of uh, 40 characters and uh, put a label here so we can loop back up to do all of the characters. It won't take very long. We'll load the screen bottom left plus one comma X. So and we're gonna store that in screen bottom left comma X, which is essentially just gonna move one character over, right? All the way across.
pulling it to the left is the effect that we're looking for. It will uh, it will overwrite the very last um, screen memory location with the new character from the hello message that we made below. And I'll show you that in a sec. We'll increment the X register so that we can finish up this loop. Put 39 characters because the uh, Commodore screen is only 40 characters, right? Have you reached the end of the line? 39 characters. 40 technically because zero is a number. And then MVLP1, French if not equal. Back up there, keep doing it. 40 times to get all the characters. Right. Now we're gonna load the next character from Hello Message. Now, this uh, hello message is quite large. I'd say it's close to like a thousand bytes at least, which exceeds the normal 256 byte uh, constraint. But we're gonna work around that by using that dressing mode I was talking about. So we're gonna load the X register. Actually, I'm swapping it up on y'all at this point. I'm, I'm teaching you about indexed indirect zero page addressing this is going to work but i'm going to also show you at the end of this video uh indexed indirect or indirect indexing but it uses the y register instead same thing so what we're doing is we're loading in the zp temp as the address right offsetting it by x so it's going to load the whatever is the high and low byte of CP temp, which is uh, basically down at the hello message. Hopefully, this makes sense to y'all. Now we're going to store that one character that we grab from the hello message at the screen bottom right and then we're going to increment the zero page temporary uh, low byte and if it flips over to zero that means we'll also want to increment the zp temp high byte but if not we're just going to branch over that right in that way you could uh, essentially scroll through the entire memory of the commoner basic if it does not equal to FF, right? So anytime it encounters an FF, it's going to stop. And uh, up there, I put jump subroutine reset message, which we haven't filled out yet. And that's where we're going to set the pointer of the message back to zero. So, tried to run this and I actually forgot that I needed to put these in uppercase. ZP underscore temp, ZP temp low and ZP temp high. They all need to be in uppercase since that's what we defined up there to begin with. Okay. And uh, let's try running this now and see what happens. At this point, we won't have any color cycling because we haven't written that in yet. But it should do the scroller message. Oh, I made a mistake where it says screen code upper. It needs to have an underscore in there for kick assembler to recognize that. Okay, so, okay, something is wrong. What did we forget? I wonder. Let's take a look. Did I do this right with the 
Maybe I need to do this with a Y instead. Hmm. I hope I'm not confusing y'all. It was X. This is the uh, indexed indirect method as opposed to the indirect indexed. Uh, I know, confusing. But uh, let's see, what did we forget? Hello, message. There. Ah, I think I know what it is. Hmm. Maybe. We need to do. We need to jump to subroutine here to the reset the message for it to begin with. Because we don't know where that zero page pointer is pointing to at this point. So we have to define that. Reset message. Jump subroutine reset message. Let's run and see. Wait a minute. Here we go. We haven't filled in the reset message routine. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, and this is actually where. This is what matters the most, right? So we're gonna load the accumulator with the low byte of hello message. Okay, I'm gonna store that at ZP temp low, right? This is our vector to the location of hello message. High byte loading to the accumulator. Store the accumulator of the high buy into ZP temp high, and that's how you reset the message. So now let's see. Let's run this again. See what happens. Okay, now we're talking. So there it is. It's working, but we just haven't filled in the color cycling. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so right after we skip the move, we want to do a color cycling. Let's load the X register with uh, 39 decimal, because that's 40 characters. And the color in on the bottom is only 40 characters. So colors bottom left, let's load the accumulator. Colors bottom left plus one. And then we're gonna pull that color memory across just like we did with the screen colors or the screen RAM for the letters this is for the colors but we're gonna do this at different intervals this is gonna happen more frequently than the characters being updated I need to put a comma X after these And it should be minus one instead of plus one. There we go. Load the accumulator with colors bottom left, minus one comma X, store in colors bottom left comma X, decrement the X register, then compare X with uh, FF, which is the end of the color cycle. So branch of not equal to cycle colors. We're just gonna cycle it a whole slew of times. Right. We're just pulling it to the left, essentially. Once it hits zero, our FF, it's going to end that loop. Now we're going to increment the color table position. Then we're going to load the X register with the color table position. And then load color table comma X. And this will give us our colors that we want to store next at the bottom left of the, of the screen. Right. Boom. Got that. Oh, I need some branch. If, yeah, that was right. Branch if not equals. X registers. Colors, bottom left. What am I missing here? Compare it with FF. This is for the color table. If it is, if it reaches the end, then we need to reset the color uh, position, right? 
But if it's not, we can just store the accumulator in the colors bottom left and jump to main. And then right under there, reset the colors, load accumulator with FF, store that with colors, we need to store that at color table position. Yeah. The reason why I do FF is because the very next time it's going to increment and it's going to be a zero. So there's no need to do any additional checking at that point. And then jump to main after that. And that should give us our color cycling that we were talking about. Let's see what happens. There we go. Long text scroller with color cycling. Now it's not exactly the same as what's going on down below. I've got a custom character set going on at the bottom. But I did I covered that in a different video. So this is how you do it with the wire register, how I intentionally originally wanted to show you how to use this wire register here. It's outside of the parentheses. This is what you call uh what does it call it? I'm so confused. Indexed, indirect, no, that's X. So indirect, indexed, addressing mode, zero page. And as you can see, it does the same thing. It just does it differently. And this is how you can access however much memory that you want. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, I am a somewhat amateur Commodore 64 programmer. I am learning and this programming series is you watching me learn the Commodore 64 better and so I appreciate you coming on this journey with me. So if you like our video please give us a like, subscribe, share, and all that jazz. Um, maybe you can offer some suggestions as to what kind of topics I can cover. And uh, I'll see about if I can tackle those or not. Leave it in the comments below. Also, all of the information is linked into all of our descriptions and all of our uh, videos. So please check out the descriptions. Once again, thank you for watching. This is Deadline with Cities In. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any of our new programming series. And be sure to check out all the other vintage computer related videos on our channel. Right here on Cities End.